there's this whole fear mongering that uh, Russia is going to invade Ukraine. Well, we need to look at the, the propaganda that they're peddling and what kind of support the West is offering Ukraine. So as we've seen, the UK, the US, they sent weapons to Ukraine. Uh, but there have been programs uh, run by the CIA that go back several years now, since 2014, 2015, where they've been supporting, uh, you know, giving, again, training, uh, weapons, funding to uh, militias in Ukraine. What kinds of militias? Neo-Nazis. And this is not something that, that happened a few years ago. It's still happening right now. And I want to show some very interesting pieces to you. Let me show you this piece from Euronews, okay? So... You can see here, they try to paint it like, oh, it's, it's these friendly, uh, these harmless civilians that are being trained to fight the evil Russians who are about to invade, right? It's, it's like a, a home defense. It's a home guard. The people are mobilizing and they're protecting themselves in case the big bad Russian wolf comes along. Okay. And it's not just that. You even have a grandmother, right, who is being trained. Like, there, there's this... <laughs> look at this. There was this grandmother over here that, that went viral. That she's being, she's, you know, like the situation is so dire that even the elderly, even even the elderly have to get down in the mud and start training with Kalashnikovs to, to get ready for the Russians. And I want to show you, I want to point to something interesting. Look at the guy that's standing with her. Okay, look at his, look at his arm, the patch on his arm. That, that's a Nazi symbol. Now, it, of course, it was co-opted by the Nazis. They didn't invent it, but it's, a, it's absolutely a Nazi symbol. And uh, the thing is that these groups are neo-Nazis, right? So what the West is trying to portray as oh, a home guard, these are militias that are defending Ukraine from the evil Russians. Uh, uh, a good chunk of those are neo-Nazis. And this is being concealed by the media. So the U.S. is funding these groups, right? The CIA passed these... Um, funding packages already back in 2015. I just want to show you one thing, for example. Um, look at this. So this is, this is back in 2014, right? They wanted to give a good, nice, a good, nice wad of cash to, to these Ukrainian militias, okay? And there, there was concern, this is this again from the nation, there was concern that some of that money would go to neo-Nazi groups such as the Azov Battalion, okay? And you had... Congressman John Conyers of Michigan and Ted Yoho of Florida, who'd made an amendment to the House Defense Appropriations Bill that, quote, limits arms training and other assistance to the neo-Nazi Ukrainian militia, the Azov Battalion. It passed by unanimous vote in the House. OK, so even Congress is concerned, like, you, you, OK, we'll send Ukraine money, but we're not going to give it to these neo-Nazis. And so they drop this amendment and they pass it to to exclude this neo-Nazi group from getting this money. And then. The article continues, and yet by the time November came around and the, conf and the conference debate over the year-end appropriations bill was underway, the Conyers-Yoho measure appeared to be in jeopardy, and indeed it was. An official former with the debate told the nation that the House Defense Appropriations Committee came under pressure from the Pentagon to remove the Conyers-Yoho amendment from the text of the bill. So again, let me translate that for you in case it wasn't clear. The Pentagon interfered and made Congress get rid of this amendment, excluding the neo-Nazi group, this Azov Battalion, from receiving funding, okay? So the Pentagon insisted that these Nazis in Ukraine, these neo-Nazis, get money, a neo-Nazi militia, okay? And, I mean, just to explain, give me a second, like, this, this symbol that you're seeing on this guy's uh, uh, arm over here, this arm patch, right? Right, that's called the Wolfsangel, okay? That's the name that it has. And you have the second SS Panzer Division, das Reich, which had this, this symbol in World War II. And this is a very significant uh, uh, division because they committed a massacre. I mean, just as one of the atrocities, but the, one of the most famous ones is they massacred uh, Oradour in, in France, right? It's a very famous massacre. They, they killed around 600 civilians. They just massacred them, executed them. They, they destroyed the entire village. And there's a famous poem about that. We, I, I remember learning this in school, right? Oradour n'a plus de femmes, Oradour n'a plus un homme. This poem. And it's about that village being massacred by this battalion, this Nazi uh, uh, division, which has this Wolfsangel as the insignia. And this is what the neo-Nazis in Ukraine are using, the exact same insignia. 
And it's not an accident, right? Because again, in, if you go back 150 years, you'll see the same symbol being used in a different context. But this is this is exactly what it is. It's an it's a neo-Nazi symbol uh, being used now. And I want to show you a report from Al Jazeera, who went to talk uh, to these to, to the neo-Nazi militias right now. This is February 13th. Take a look at this interview. Let's watch it together, okay? These men training on a football pitch in eastern Ukraine say they want to defend their country from Russian aggression. Freikorps has its origin in German nationalist groups of the 18th and 19th century. And the leaders of the group say it has thousands of members. But only 60 have bought their own licensed weapons and regularly serve alongside Ukrainian army soldiers on the 420 kilometer front line. 24-year-old Gleb studied homeland security and crisis management at university. He says one day he wants to open a gun shop. Why did you choose Michael? Um, because they're more ideologically closer to me. So, uh... so you see again the symbol on the on the chest. He's got the Wolf's angle, the the neo-Nazi insignia. I decided to join them. When you say they are more ideologically closer to you, can you tell me what, what you mean by that? How pay, pay attention to this question, right? So he asks this, this, this uh, guy about their ideology. What do you guys believe in? So uh, I decided to join them. When you say they are more ideologically closer to you, can you tell me what, what you mean by that? How? What do you believe in ideologically? Uh, can we pause that? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Did you see that? He's he asks him, "What do you guys believe in ideolo ideolo ideologically?" And he's like, "Can we pause that?" He doesn't want to say it on camera because it's fucking obvious that they're new Nazis. And th again, this is not just speculation because they use the the symbol. They, this is their ideology, and it's absolutely disgusting. The type of things that that they uh, um that they celebrate. Let me show you this over here. This is later in the same video, okay? It was in 2019. But some of its leaders, such as Dmitro Yarosh, have been made advisors to the head of the Ukrainian military. Participants in this torch-lit rally resembling Nazi gatherings in 1930s Germany hold a banner honoring Stefan Bandera, a Ukrainian Nazi collaborator widely recognized as organizing the massacre of tens of thousands of ethnic Poles in Ukraine towards the end of World War II. Bandera. So do, do you see that they're, they're literally honoring a, a Nazi collaborator, right, who, who's, uh, who massacred Poles? Uh, I mean, th this is so vile. And what, what's, what's mind-boggling to me is that I don't understand the, the relation. I really don't know how, the, how people in Ukraine can support uh, uh, Nazism or, or have neo-Nazi manifestations. I mean, the, the Nazis considered Slavic people to be uh, subhuman, untermenschen, and that's why they killed Russians, they killed people of Eastern Europe. They, they, they killed them in the millions, right? They committed genocide against them. Uh, for example, the, the, the Russians, um, the Russian prisoners of war, we're not treated like the British and the American prisoners of war by the Nazis, right? So the British and the Americans were, were treated somewhat okay. Uh, you still had massacres, of course, against British uh, POWs, like the Great Escape. But um, the Russians were killed. You had death marches, starvation. They, they literally had calculated down to the, ca the calorie um, of, of how much... Um, this is uh, Bakke, the, the food minister uh, under the Nazis. They, they literally calculated how many calories um, they could give, uh, you know, the Russians so that the Russians have not even enough to survive, but German soldiers can be well fed. And they starved them to death. And they, they had these death marches. They, they killed the majority of Russian POWs were, were killed precisely because the Germans regarded them as subhuman. Uh, and the, the same with all Slavic people, right? So, so. The Ukrainians, I have no clue. I do, I, do not, I do not understand how they can possibly have neo-Nazis, given the history of Nazis towards people of Eastern Europe. It's, it's just disgusting. You know, I mean, it, it's not even just a Ukrainian thing. Like, wherever you are in the fucking world, how could you be okay with this, right? And so this is who the CIA is funding. Um, make no mistake about it. 
And don't be don't be surprised. It's not, it's nothing like this shouldn't shock you if you actually know what the CIA is. Because if you look at Afghanistan in the Cold War uh, to defeat the Soviets, the the Americans were funding these mujahideen, right? And uh, what did that morph into? Al Qaeda, right? So the Al Qaeda has its roots in CIA funding. Many of the senior leadership in Al Qaeda received CIA money. Uh, you know, Al Zawahiri, Bin Laden, and so uh, again blowback right the, the americans are so desperate to interfere and and, and counter russia uh, that they're willing to create uh, groups like al qaeda uh, you know willingly or inadvertently what, what difference does it make um I, they're not stupid you know the cia are not stupid they know exactly who they're sending millions of dollars to they're not dumb um and then of course in syria look at what happened in syria right these moderate rebels they're not moderate rebels it's fucking al qaeda again <laughs> right so they're, they're paying these these um uh, well, of course, you have the ones that are funded by Saudi Arabia and so on, but you have the CIA going into Libya after they toppled Gaddafi and sending all of these weapons, uh, you know, that were stored there, these weapon caches over into Syria, right? And of course, there's additional funding and logistical support and, and all of that stuff. And so they know what they're doing. Uh, they don't mind because for them, it's, it's, it's like, well, we hate Bashar al-Assad, we hate the Syrian government so much that we're willing to get in bed with al-Qaeda and, and Israel, of course, the exact same thing. Right. And then in this case, no different. We hate the Russians so much that we're willing to get in bed with new Nazis. It doesn't matter. And then, of course, in the media, they'll whitewash it for the, for the CIA and, and, and the West. They'll, they'll come out and say that, oh, look, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little grandmother who's being taught to shoot because of the big, bad fucking Russians that are coming. And then you look at the arm patch literally above her and it's a neo-Nazi. It's a, it's a neo-Nazi. I mean... You know, the, the levels that they stoop to is so disgusting. And, and it's the same thing in Syria, right? You have Al-Qaeda, pe people chopping heads off, and then they try to whitewash it and, and say, no, no, it's not, it's not Al-Qaeda. They're moderate rebels. They're moderate. They're not cuckoo. They're not extremists. They're moderates. Really? You got, you got some interesting uh, definition of moderate, don't you? So this is well documented by now. I mean, th this is, I just read to you, um, the instance in, in 2015, 2014, when they gutted uh, this amendment that excluded the Azov Battalion from receiving this funding. I mean, that, that is so clear cut. Like, what, how could you possibly justify that or excuse that or be okay with that? The Pentagon interfering to make sure that neo-Nazis in Ukraine get money. It's disgusting, right? And th this is all over the place. It's not just back in... Uh, 2015 and 2014, even now, today, in January, this is from January 26, right? They're, they're bragging, they're bragging about the support that they're getting from the State Department um, and, you know, from the U.S. government, because they're, they're, it's, it's only a secret if you watch mainstream media, but if you just do a bare minimum of, of looking around, you're going to understand very quickly what's happening. And I think this is this is very disgusting. Uh, you know, supporting neo Nazis. What, what is that? That that is again the same kind of ideology that that uh, killed people in Syria. This the CIA coming in and and training, funding lunatics, extremists. Uh, you know, the scum of the earth uh, and causing bloodbaths. And then it's the same thing in Latin America. You know, all these right wing uh, guerrillas that they trained in torture and other tactics. Uh, you know, committing bloodbaths, and they don't care who they get in bed with. So this is astonishing to me that you have, uh, you know, people who trust that this is, it's exclusively about Russia. It's all about Russia being an aggressor and the U.S. is totally innocent. And uh, Ukraine is, uh, you know, these, these militias that, who are, you know, teaching nice little grannies how to shoot. There's nothing wrong with them. They're nice people. You know, uh, don't be a Putin puppet. <laughs> And I want to show you this from the Times of Israel, right? This is from 2019. The headline reads, Netanyahu meets with head of Ukrainian party that includes neo-Nazis. Okay? So, the next time that they talk, they talk about anti-Semitism, please explain to me why Netanyahu is meeting with someone who has neo-Nazis in his party. Right? In Ukraine, of course. In Ukraine. So, it, it, it's so funny, right? When it, when it comes to actual anti-Semitism, like these disgusting neo-Nazis who, who, you know, have a... Have a an ideology that's rooted in, in racial hatred. Uh, apparently, anti-Semitism, it, it flies out the window. It's, it's totally fine. This is not an issue. 
But of course, you know, if you're Palestinian, you're Syrian, you're Lebanese, you want to resist the Israeli occupation, then you are an anti-Semite. Wow, that's interesting. Here's something, something else that's interesting. This is from just a few months ago. This is from December 2021. The United States and Ukraine voted against an anti-Nazism resolution at the UN General Assembly. The United States, which has long championed human rights, voted against the resolution to combat the glorification of Nazism, neo-Nazism, and xenophobia. So the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution proposed by Russia and more than 30 other countries to condemn Nazism, neo-Nazism, and other racist practices. The resolution was part of two draft resolutions taken from the report on elimination of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. Look... Everyone is okay with this, right? The resolution was well accepted among the member states with 130 votes in favor, right? And the only ones, <laughs> the, only, the United States and Ukraine were the only two states to vote against the resolution. Jesus Christ. I mean, that, that, that really tells you everything you need to know, right? Why, why on earth would Ukraine that has suffered under the Nazis, why would the United States that, that has fought the Nazis uh, not be okay with this resolution? Most, most you know, UN members are fine with it. What's so special about you that you won't vote for this? It, it, of course, because that would make, pain, you know, they'd look like hypocrites then. Because they're, fun, they're working with neo-Nazis in, in Ukraine. And let me tell you something about Russia. I'm going to say this again because I feel like there's a lot of, you know, there's, there is a lot of propaganda about World War II. Uh, you know, of course, the, the US and the UK did their part. Uh, so did the French resistance. So did the Polish. But Russia... Uh, Russia caused 80% of all German casualties, okay? So, you know, because if you watch too many Hollywood movies, you might be left with an impression with, with the idea that it's the United States that single-handedly defeated the Nazis. It's not true. That's, that's not true. The United States only entered, you know, after Pearl Harbor. Um, now, of course, uh, the British were fighting uh, the Germans since, you know, 1939. But in the end, Russia is responsible for crushing the Nazis uh, you know, 80%, 80% of the German casualties were caused by Russia. And another thing that I would tell you um, is that, you know, uh, sorry, just one second. I think I, d I disconnected my mic. I hope you can still hear me. Yeah, so and I, I was just going back to, to World War II. I just, my, my point was that Russia has a, a good track record of opposing fascism. And, and it suffered 20 million casualties. You know, 20 million Russians died in World War II. So Russia suffered more uh, uh, and inflicted more casualties than any other party, any other member, uh, sorry, any other state uh, in World War II. So keep that in mind. You know, Russia really suffered from World War II. I mean, everyone did who was under, you know, the Nazi and Japanese occupation. But um, Russia really did a lot of the heavy lifting. So never, never forget that. 20 million Russians died. 20 million. And like I told you, the POWs alone is, is a couple of million, four or five million, right? So... It's incredible. Um, so, you know, when you come along and talk about uh, aggression and who's being antagonistic, always remember what's going on, that NATO is trying to expand. Uh, they're trying to add Ukraine. And there's already, you know, uh, there's already more countries now bordering Russia than there were in 1990. So even though the Soviet Union collapsed, they're still, they keep on trying to surround Russia with bases. They keep trying to surround Russia with, with missiles. And, and, of course, the Patriot missile systems. That, I mean, look at who's going to who, okay? Russia is not, you know, uh, in Mexico or in Canada trying to build bases or forge military alliances to, to contain the United States. It's the other way around. And look at who is, you know, who they're working with, the, these neo-Nazis uh, that they're so, you know, openly, just ca callously uh, funding and giving training to and weapons. This, this immediately should raise, you know, red flags. You, you should immediately uh, be able to see that something fishy is going on. Uh, and especially when Ukraine itself is saying, you guys are overreacting. There's not gonna, we're not afraid of a Russian invasion as much as the UK is or the US is. Uh, you need to stop because you're hurting our economy. I mean, what else am I supposed to say? Uh, here we are, February 16th. It's well past 1 a.m. There's been no invasion. Once again... More lies, more lies, and more lies from the mainstream media. And I think this is incredible. You know, journalism, if you can call this journalism what they're doing, it's really one of the only fields where you can lie so much and, and so frequently 
and not just not lose your job, but fail upwards. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's incredible, right? How many things do these people get wrong? How many things do they get wrong? Vietnam, uh, Iraq, Syria, Russia, it, it's endless. It's it, Libya, it, it's endless how many things they get wrong. And people still think that, that, you know, we should trust the mainstream media and vilify independent media and make sure that on YouTube, all the independent left channels get demonetized or deplatformed and, you know, uh, uh, launch some crusade against them. Yeah, because we're challenging, we're challenging these power centers and we're challenging the propaganda. And this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable to them. They want to, they want to keep narrative control. And so that's why if you question any of uh, the, the hysteria about Ukraine, they, they default to things like, oh, well, you know, you're a Putin puppet or you're bought by the Kremlin uh, and so on and so on. You know, it's, it's always I, th I think when you switch to personal tax, you, you've lost the battle, like you've lost the argument. As soon as you switch to personal tax, you've lost it. I'm looking at the facts. I'm looking at the track record of the media. I'm looking at the track record of the United States and the CIA, who they get in bed with, who they're funding. Why are they doing this? Who is expanding bases next to whom? And then you will see who is the real threat.